Hello ladies and gentlemen, Miss Skoken here. We are finishing up our work in Chapter 5, Similarity, with Section 7-5, Using Proportional Relationships. And our objectives are use ratios to make indirect measurements and use scale drawings to solve problems. In our vocabulary, indirect measurement, scale drawing, and scale. We've got four warm-up questions, so I'm going to have you pause the video do the warm-up questions and turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answers. Based on these warm-up questions, you might predict that we're going to have some conversions to do in this lesson, and that would be correct. If you have any questions about any of these conversions, definitely ask in class. You need to be comfortable converting between different kinds of units, both in the English system and in the metric system, finding perimeter and finding area. You move on to the bottom of the page and it says indirect measurement is any method that uses formulas, similar figures, and or proportions to measure an object. That means you're not going around with a measuring tape. All right, let's take a look at example one. Example one, our good friend Tyler wants to find the height of a telephone pole. He measured the pole's shadow and his own shadow and then made a diagram. What is the height h of the pole? You can probably see by looking at the diagram that we've got two what appear to be similar triangles. And remember, because similar triangles are proportional, we can use the relationship of the measurements on one to find measurements on the other. So the first thing, though, that we need to do is to convert our feet and inches into either all inches or all feet. As we saw on the previous page, in order to convert feet and inches into only inches, we're going to need to take the feet, multiply by 12, and then add the product to the inches. The length of the shadow of the telephone pole is converted from 38 feet and 4 inches to 460 inches. The length of Tyler's shadow is converted from 7 feet and 8 inches to 92 inches. And Tyler's height is converted from 5 feet 9 inches to 69 inches. At this point, we're ready to set up our proportions. And we're going to start with length AB, which is the length of Tyler's shadow, is proportional to the telephone pole's shadow, FG. That ratio is going to be equal to CB, which is Tyler's height, as to HG, which is the height of the telephone pole. And like always, once we have that proportion set up, all we need to do is plug in and solve the proportion. Solving the proportion, we're able to find that the height of the telephone pole is 345 inches, and then we convert it back into feet because it's a large measurement. We're not going to actually measure it in inches. We're going to measure it in feet. So we've got 28 feet and 9 inches is the height of the telephone pole. We were able to figure it out using the similar triangle of Tyler's shadow and the telephone pole's shadow and the two relative heights. Now, we've got a now you try for you to do. So... You're going to pause the video, work that one through, remember to do your conversions first before you go any further, and then turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answers. Proportions again, super handy in finding DF, which is the height of the pineapple statue. And we were able to use the student's height, the length of the shadow of the pineapple, and the length of the student's shadow to create a proportion, and using that proportion, we're able to find the missing value. Again, this is all because of similar triangles. A scale drawing represents an object that is much larger or much smaller than the drawing of the object. The drawing scale is the ratio of any length in the drawing to the corresponding length on the actual object. So again, we're talking about proportional side lengths or proportional dimensions with the same similarity ratio in both the length or the width or the height, whatever the dimensions happen to be. Let's take a look at example two. On a Wisconsin road map, Kristen measured a distance 
of 11 and 1 8 inches from Madison to Wausau. Now that mixed number is going to be kind of difficult for us to work with. So let's go ahead and convert that to an improper fraction. We remember how to do that. We take the 11 and multiply it to the 8 and then add the 1. So we end up with 89 eighths inches. The scale of this map is 1 inch to 13 miles. What is the actual distance between Madison and Wausau to the nearest mile? Scale is how we relate the map distance to the real distance. So one inch on the map represents 13 miles in real life. We can use that relationship to create a proportion. On the left hand side of the proportion we have the scale. One inch is to 13 miles and on the right hand side we're going to put in the map distance of 89 eighths inches uh, in the numerator and on the denominator we're going to put our unknown value the actual distance between Madison and Wausau and we've got another proportion to solve inches cancel and we end up with 144.625 miles but the question asked us to round to the nearest mile so to the nearest mile, Madison and Wausau are 145 miles apart. That brings us to your turn on the Now You Try. You're going to use a map, and the instructions say the scale of this map of downtown Dallas is 1.5 centimeters, representing 300 meters. Find the actual distance between Union Station and the Dallas Public Library. You'll notice on the map it's marked or highlighted in red, and on the map it measures six centimeters. Okay, ready to go. Go ahead and set up your proportion. Turn the video back on when you're ready to check your final answer. Using the scale, we're able to set up a proportion between the scale and the map distance to the actual distance. Once we plug the numbers in, we are able to get the actual distance of 1,200 meters between the Union Station and Dallas Public Library. If you have any questions about this example, of course bring it to class. Let's take a look at example 3 now. Example 3 says, Lady Liberty holds a tablet in her left hand. The tablet is 7.19 meters long and 4.14 meters wide. If you made a scale drawing using the scale 1 centimeter to 0.75 meters, what would be the dimensions to the nearest tenth? When it asks for the dimensions, we want both the length and the width. We're going to set up two separate proportions, one for the length and one for the width, using the scale and the information of the actual length and width of the tablet. Once we have the proportion set up, as always, we're going to Substitute in the actual values and then solve the proportions. Drawing length is what we're trying to find, so I'm going to put in a variable for drawing length. Now we can solve for x. Remember that as long as we're all in one unit, meaning all centimeters or all meters, it's going to end up allowing us to cancel out the units that we don't need. They will cancel each other out and we're going to end up in centimeters only. In this case, our drawing length is 9.6 centimeters. Now let's do the width. And we're able to find the drawing width is 5.5 centimeters. So we found the dimensions of, to the nearest tenth of the drawing of the Statue of Liberty's tablet. Next we've got a Now You Try with the Lincoln Memorial and you as always, are going to pause the video, work on the question, and turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answer. See you back in a bit. Using the scale and the actual length and width of the Lincoln Memorial, we're able to find the dimensions of the drawing, 3.8 centimeters long and 2.4 centimeters wide. Now that we're able to use scales to help us find real lengths and drawing or model lengths, let's take a look at similarity, perimeter, and area. 
In the box, we've got two similar triangles. And if you notice, triangle DEF has twice the side length of triangle ABC. When we create the similarity ratio of triangle ABC to triangle DEF, we have a similarity ratio of 1 half. And remember that because they're similar triangles, we know that each of the corresponding side lengths is going to have the same ratio to the others. We notice that the perimeter ratio is exactly the same as the similarity ratio. So the perimeter around ABC ends up being the total of 12 is 1 half of the perimeter of DEF. So the similarity ratio and the perimeter ratio are exactly the same. The area ratio, remember area is square units. If we look at the area ratio of triangle ABC to triangle DEF, of course we have to cal calculate the areas of both, but what we find is that it's the similarity ratio squared. So this is gonna hold true with other triangles. Let's take a look at theorem 7-5-1. Proportional Perimeters and Areas Theorem. If the similarity ratio of two similar figures is A to B, then their ratio of perimeters is A to B, and the ratio of their areas is A squared to B squared, or A to B squared. Let's get some practice with example number four. We're given the information in the question that triangle LMN is similar to triangle QRS and we're given the perimeter and area for triangle LMN. Knowing what we know, we want to find the perimeter and area of triangle QRS. We'll start by finding the similarity ratio. The similarity ratio is just side length over side length for corresponding sides. We find a similarity ratio of 10 to 7, and we know that the perimeter ratio is exactly the same. We know we can use the perimeter ratio to set up a proportion to find the perimeter of triangle QRS. 10 over 7 is going to equal the ratio between the perimeter of triangle LMN and the perimeter of triangle QRS. We're trying to find the perimeter of triangle QRS, so we can substitute in the perimeter of triangle LMN and then solve the proportion. Solving the proportion brings us to 25.2 centimeters as the perimeter of triangle QRS. Now let's find the area of triangle QRS using the area ratio. The area ratio is, so the, is square the square of the perimeter, of the perimeter ratio. ratio. And that means our area ratio is 100 to 49. And we can set up a proportion to find the area of triangle QRS. Using the area ratio and the area of triangle LMN, which is a similar triangle, we're able to find the area of triangle QRS. On the next page, there is a now you try for you to practice using the similarity perimeter and area ratios. Given that triangle RST is similar to triangle UVW, find the perimeter P and area A of triangle UVW. Remember to start by finding the similarity ratio. When you're ready to check your work, turn the video back on. This will be the last example for the lesson. Once again, using the proportional perimeters and areas theorem, we're able to find the perimeter and the area of the triangle that is similar to triangle RST, which is the one that we have the perimeter and area information for. If you have some questions, of course, like always, bring them to class. But hopefully you have enough information to get a really great start on your independent practice. Good luck, and I'll see you back in class.